Uh, automation is a huge issue, as, as you all know, and it does affect transportation safety in a good way. It can improve safety, but it can also have uh, negative consequences. And for me, a basic document concerning automation is, is a document uh, by, Dr., uh, by the late Dr. Charlie Billings on, on, on human-centered automation. And Dr. Billings outlined six principles of human-centered automation. And I'll just, I'll just read them, and, and, and I'm not going to really get into them, but the point is, is that these six principles sort of formulate the thought processes that I've used over the years to formulate my views on human-centered automation. As I boil it down, basically, what I take away from this is that the, the, the automation is there to support the human and not the other way around. And I think sometimes in the, in the design, in the application, in the implementation of, of automation, sometimes we've gotten that reversed. The old primary backup inversion, where the primary means has become inverted with something else. Remember, the human, the automation is there to support the human. Oh, 25 years ago, somebody mentioned to me the term, the, the electronic cocoon. And, and that notion has sort of stuck with me as it involves some types of automation. We've got the human, and when we talk about human-centered, I literally envision that the human is in the center of this electronic cocoon. Basically, the human is, the human operator is free to operate anywhere within that box, if you will. And as long as the operator keeps the vehicle within that box, the automation can be transparent to the operator. Most importantly, the operator is actively involved with controlling or monitoring the system. I view that there are, there are advantages to the human-centered automation. Um, there, it allows the operator to remain actively engaged in the control loop and the system will intervene in some form or fashion if the operator attempts to take the vehicle outside of the box. Non-human-centered automation, the, the operator is adjunct to the automation. They're not a part of it. They're, they're not in the center of it. They're removed from, from the control loop. The operator's involvement is limited to monitoring the system. And as, as you've heard me say, and you'll hear me say again, we as humans are not really good monitors at, high, at monitoring highly reliable, highly automated systems. And the, the, the danger or the hazard here is that when you're not actively involved in something, it's easy to, to, to not be engaged at all. And in just a moment, we'll look at, a, at an animation from the Colgan Air accident, and the crew, two crew members, are just sitting there staring at something, not realizing that their airplane is about to stall. To talk about not a non-centered human automation, an example of non-centered, non-human centered automation. Three years ago in Washington, D.C., tragic accident, nine fatalities, one train ran into the back of another one. The automatic train control system did not detect that train, so therefore could not stop the other train. The operator comes around the corner. She no doubt sees the train in front of her, but as it has done hundreds of times before, she thinks it's going to stop. By the time she, she feels the adrenaline rush and she realizes it's not gonna stop, and she mashes the mushroom to, to go into emergency stop, it's too late. She has been taught to rely and to trust that automation. I'm not sure of the safety advantages of, of designing something that, where the human is not centered. Uh, the disadvantages that I can see are is that, first of all, the human is, is removed from the control loop. And the operator's involvement is limited to just monitoring. For the third time, I'll say it, humans aren't really good at monitoring highly reliable, highly automated systems over time. And the operator may be uh, passively engaged or, or not engaged at all. 
One of the myths about the impact of automation on human, human performance is as, as investment in automation increases, less investment is needed in human expertise. In fact, many sources have shown that increased automation creates new knowledge and skill requirements. We have to provide the operators with the tools that they need to properly understand the automation and properly use it. Uh, to wrap it up, uh, automation needs to support the, the operator and, and not the other way around. Who's the master? Who's the slave? Let's keep those in the proper order. And don't forget, after you've come in with a good design, don't forget that we have to have good training and procedures.